All right, w welcome back to Binary Adventure, where this is the final part of the video, and we've already covered the rest of this program, like about from here up. We went over how to create structures in IDA, and now we're going to go over um, mostly this part of the program. However, we are going to touch on up here real quick, because you may have noticed that I actually unlabeled the age up here. And the reason why is, is not because EAX plus 34 is not the age, but it can be misleading the way it's written here, exactly what's going on. So you'll notice that it says D word pointer EAX plus 34, uh, comma 43, and we do a move here. So we're moving the immediate uh, or constant number 43 directly into the age variable, the integer. And that's what we're doing here. However, you then see that we again move EAX plus 34, which is age, into EDX. So what's going on is that first we've placed the 43 into the structure member, and then we've dereferenced the structure member and placed the 43 number itself into EDX. But if I go back here and I hit T, and I do person age, person age, it can be kind of confusing. It just looks like the age is being moved twice for some reason in. So that's what's going on there. And finally, at, towards the end of the program here, what we all we do is we take all of that information that we populated, all those members from the structure, and we actually place them onto the stack in different positions. And then finally, we call print F. And the reason why is because before you, um, or the way that the calling convention works is that typically in x86, you push the different arguments to the function onto the stack. So you might see push, 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 and then call. And what we're doing here is basically just that, but instead of using push, we're manually, um, we're offsetting ESP. So in other words, push will usually um, place something at the position of ESP, and then it will move ESP. It will decrement ESP. But we're actually, we've already allocated space on the stack when we did this uh, subtraction ESP minus 20 H. So all we have to do is just simply move our different pieces of data into those different slots. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And then the final, uh, the top of the stack actually gets the the message that we're printing. So... If you know anything about printf, you know that you will specify a message as the first argument with the format specifiers. So we're saying my name is blank, I have blank hair, and I am blank years old. So what we get from this is that the order that these will be displayed is by name first, then hair color, and then finally age. However, we see age, hair color, name, and that's because you always push the arguments in this calling convention in the opposite order. So you push the age first since it's last, hair color second since it's it's the second to last, and then name, and then finally the actual um, message to print goes first. And then we call printf, and after that we again put the beginning of the struct back into EAX, and then we finally uh, we move that, so we basically put that onto the stack, and so that's the pointer that's referencing the struct, and the reason why we're placing that on the stack is because we're passing it as an argument to the call function, uh, or the free function, which we're calling here. So we are, as you know, if you malloc something, you need to free it, so we are freeing it here, and then we are zeroing out EAX in preparation to return from the function. And um, this actually also has a purpose because if you look at the function, we do return exit success. And um, on many systems, the same meaning of this is return zero. But just in case it isn't, if there's a different type of system and exit success is actually five, then the, uh, the library will properly replace it. And that's the reason why I put exit success instead of return zero. But it has the same effect on this system as returning zero. So we do a, a return zero, and then uh, or we, we do a move zero in EAX, and then we do a leave, and then we do a return. So what is leave and return? 
Um, basically, leave does the exact opposite of this. So let's look at what we did up here again. So up here, we subtracted 20 from the stack pointer. And, you know, we, we changed the position of the stack pointer. And then we put the stack pointer into the base pointer. And then we pushed the base pointer. So down here, we're going to put the base pointer into, or we're going to, we're going to clean up the stack by adding to ESP by 20H. And then, so that has the effect of basically zeroing out the stack or, or deallocating the stack space. And then we will place the base pointer into the stack pointer, which will reassign the old function or the calling function stack pointer. And then finally, we will pop EBP, which will give our previous function back its base pointer. And then finally, when we return, return will, will set the instruction pointer to the return address, which would be the last address on the stack before the return. So it will pop that address off, place it in the instruction pointer, and then code execution will continue back where this function was called. So I hope that helps everyone. That was a lot to learn, a lot to go over, and it's insane how much this stuff can be talked about and studied, and it's only one small function. So this is probably why people, a lot of people don't like assembly language, because there's a lot of little minute details that you have to know if you want to program assembly language and reverse engineer and understand assembly language. And it can be time consuming. But at the same time, you have a lot of fine control, and you can see exactly what the CPU is doing and all the different ways that it can do it. So, and again, another thing I wanted to bring up was that this is only really one way to do all of this. Um, this is commonly done. This type of stuff is commonly done in um, the, like the C compiler and probably a C++ compiler will do things like this pretty often. But if you're reading uh, a regular assembly programmer's code, it could look a lot different from this. And also one thing that you learned here is by looking at offsets. So when you see a memory address placed into a register, and then you see the register being referred to by different offsets, especially with different sizes like that, then that is a clue that there is a structure in there that you can define. So again, I hope this has helped. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. It's probably something I didn't explain very clearly because that was a, a mouthful and if I, if I made a mistake or you have a better way of doing something, then place them in the comments as well. And I hope everyone has a good day. Thanks for watching Binary Adventure, and take care.